Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and remember this? This is Oumuamua, the object, or the so-called interstellar object, we've discovered back in 2017 that made headlines around the world. Well, looks like we may have discovered another one of these rocks, but this time much bigger, much brighter, and going way faster. Let's talk about this, and welcome to What The Man. So since the original discovery back in 2017, uh, we've learned quite a few things about Oumuamua, although currently we don't really have any means of studying it in a lot more detail. For one, we've realized that it's very likely not really this shape, specifically, it's probably not the so-called sausage or cigar shape, and uh, it's definitely not a so-called interstellar sail like some scientists suggested. It's more likely to be this unusual disc-like object that's probably the best representation of what we were observing in terms of the actual light curvature that we were detecting. But forget about Oumuamua, this object is slowly moving away from us, we'll probably never catch it, and it's very likely we're not going to be able to study it much more. And here's what the trajectory of Oumuamua looks like in Universe Sandbox, you can see it passing very close to the sun right there, and now it's going to start slowly moving away from the um, central region, and this is already, um, I believe, January of 2018. And so, um, in just a few years, it's going to reach farther uh, reaches of the solar system, and we're going to probably never really see it again. So, um, it just so happens that the new object that was just recently discovered um, is kind of on the way to this inner system, it's actually still approaching the inner solar system, similar to what you see right here, this is still in one mode though, um, but the object we're looking at uh, is currently being actively studied, and we're trying to see if it's really um, an interstellar object, or if it's just an object that's moving too fast. First of all, here is what a video looks like, this was released only um, basically 24 hours ago from when I'm making this video, and you can sort of see the object is moving really fast, across the night skies and um, this was filmed and detected by a very famous observatory that's not often talked about um, but it's an observatory in Crimea that is really really famous for discovering a lot of minor planets and a lot of asteroids since 1966 it's been very very active at producing a lot of newly discovered objects and basically this is kind of what it looks like this is the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory and when it comes to the name of this object, at least currently, originally it was known as GB00234. GB stands for Gennady Borisov, the original discoverer of this object. And now it's sort of known as C2019Q4 uh, Borisov. So this might be the next Oumuamua, as long as it's of course confirmed. And by using this orbit simulator from orbitsimulator.com, I can sort of show you the projected trajectory. And so this here kind of shows you where it's going to pass. This uh, orange orbit is Mars, so it's going to be somewhere between Mars and the asteroid belt, and this will be the closest approach at around 1.9 astronomical units, and it's then going to move away and leave the solar system, but it's currently coming to us from the direction of uh, Cassiopeia which is of course one of the constellations we have in the night skies, and it's sort of visible, and you can actually find it, by going um, along the path of the Milky Way here, and I think it's somewhere right there, there it is. So this is the Cassiopeia, and essentially this means that this object is coming to us from a direction of the galactic plane. Um, now, we don't really know what star it may have come from, we basically don't really know much about it just yet, we need to really observe it for many many days to determine its exact trajectory. Right now, we don't unfortunately know uh, much about the trajectory of object that I guess we can refer to as 2019 Borisov. I'm sure that this is going to be a more appropriate name as we confirm this um, discovery, but right now this is all we know. So it's coming from this direction, it's moving relatively fast, it's about 30 kilometers per second faster than it should be, um, essentially this is referred to as the excess velocity, and um, it's almost guaranteed to be a what's known as an interstellar object. Now um, as we observe it and as we take more videos and film it, we'll be able to see it um, quite well. As a matter of fact, it's, this is very likely going to be one of the brightest such objects we'll see in a long while. And this is what's really surprising about this object, is that it seems to be a lot larger and a lot brighter than scientists anticipated. 
Now, um, we think that these objects are quite common, but we expect them to be much smaller and a lot more dim, a lot less bright. And this here will be quite visible uh, even with most likely amateur telescopes. As a matter of fact, the discoverer of this object only used the telescope that was about 65 centimeters in diameter, and from what I've read, it seems that it might have magnitude of a typical asteroid, so it will be relatively easy for us to analyze um, its spectrum, possibly even determine what's on its surface and very likely um, find out what elements it has on its surface and then maybe even estimate where it came from. So all of this will be very very interesting in the next few months. We're going to have a lot of studies coming out and because it's still coming closer and closer to us, it's very likely going to give us a lot of new data. And compared to Oumuamua, it's even a little bit more hyperbolic. So in other words, it's moving a little bit faster and has a slightly more eccentric orbit than Oumuamua did. So even though Oumuamua was moving at a certain speed, and it was already pretty high, this asteroid seems to have a little bit more of everything. Size, brightness, speed, and, well, I guess in some sense, all of this data is going to provide for us in the future. Now, if you'd like to look at the actual uh, data that's been currently collected and that's been um, officially published on the website known as projectpluto.com, here it is. Uh, it's also in the description below. And um, if you know how to read it, it's basically going to show you what we're learning about it. And all of the information here will be updated pretty regularly. And the best thing about this particular link is that there's a button right here on top that says Orbit Simulator View, which you click, and then you get to explore the orbit of the object itself. And then uh, you can kind of zoom around here and uh, twist things a little bit just to see where it is and its position in the night sky so that maybe if you have a powerful enough telescope you can try to find it yourself. Now I don't really know if it's going to be that easy to find because it is after all a relatively small object but it's possible that um, within the next few months it might be um, just bright enough for us to see it with amateur telescopes. And by the way, Earth is right here. This is the blue ring, um, in case you were wondering. So it's not going to be close to Earth, but it is going to pass um, relatively close to Mars. Oh, the relatively close is a relative term in this case. Uh, so here the distance, as I mentioned before, is going to be about 1.9 astronomical units, which is still pretty far away. It's basically double the distance of Earth to the Sun. But until more data comes out and until we learn what's really happening with this rock, where it's headed and where it came from, all we can do is just maybe look at these simulations and try to figure out by simulating the trajectory and looking at it uh, using computer simulations. Now we don't really have much more detail about this just yet, um, all I know is that, well here's actually the picture of the guy who discovered it, this is Gennady Borisov himself with his custom made uh, 65 centimeter telescope. And what's really interesting is that apparently, I guess, he didn't really use the telescope from the Crimean Observatory and used his own instead. And from what I've read as well, it seems that he's already discovered at least seven different near-Earth objects with this modified telescope. And um, although I'm not sure if it's his own telescope or if he's just using the facility where he built this, I guess the details of the story will come out once we start asking more questions. For now, the cool thing is that there are already several different telescopes actively looking in the direction of this discovery and trying to establish the uh, specific details of, well, really everything. So in the next few months we're going to have a lot of really interesting things to talk about and it's very likely that we're going to find a lot more of these objects coming from the various parts of the um, galaxy and also possibly from the outskirts of our own solar system. And for now that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the links I mentioned in the description below, including of course the links with all of the up-to-date data and um, if you do have a powerful enough telescope you might be able to see this maybe in the next few months or so. On that note I hope we come up with a really cool name for this. I really hope it's not just a number um, because you know Oumuamua became famous because of the cool name that it had. Well at least I think so. On that note thank you for watching come back tomorrow to learn something else and come back uh, sometime this week to learn about another similar object that came from most likely another star that's actually kind of mysterious and somewhat interesting in many different ways. Anyway, we'll talk about this in a future video, so do come back, subscribe, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.